Hey guys, Friday afternoon and we're loading up today. I'm going to run you through the light bar suite that we've got fitted uh, to the black truck behind me. Now we get a lot of questions, a lot of inquiries on why we run the lights that we do. Now over the years, I've tried every single style of light that you can imagine. I've gone from your $100 eBay jobs and ended up progressed all the way through with this gear in front of me, which I consider the best mix of lighting that you can get from definitely the best brand on the market. Now it needs to be said, X-Ray are at the top of their game when it comes to LED and HID uh, lighting. This is what these guys are all about. They're all Australian designed uh, for Australian conditions and it shines, and that's not a pun, it actually shines through the company and all the gear that they produce. Now the number one question uh, that we often get asked when people are gonna buy a set of lights for their truck is do I go HID or do I go LED? Now, I'm definitely no scientist when it comes to that stuff, but I'll tell you what I do know. There is no way that you can get the power out of a single LED that you can out of a HID. HIDs are gonna project light a lot further. Um, they come with a standard sort of bulb. It's filled with gas. LEDs are a lot smaller. For example, when you look at, say, a 220 mil uh, light, like the one I've got in front of me, HID will always have a single bulb in the centre with a standard sort of reflector, and LED will have 6, 8, 10, 12 bulbs at 10 watts or something each. These are 90 watts, these ones in front of me, to get that same amount of light. But you can't get the projection out of the light that you can with a HID. So that's something to remember. Now. The reason I run both is I get the best of both worlds. You get a much cleaner, much clearer light out of an LED, and that all comes down to the optics that are in front of that LED, which I'll go through with you in a second. Out of a HID, you're gonna get a lot further projection. So again, the best of both worlds, we get nice clean light, a nice spread of light around the truck, and it comes down to position on, on where you put the lights on your truck. Again, I'll run through that later on, but the mix of the two gives you the best of both worlds. The first one I'll talk to you about is the 220mm HID that I've got fitted on the front of the black truck. Now I've got two of these in a pencil beam, they're also available in a spread. Um, they've got an internal ballast, like all your premium lights should have, again indestructible. Good thing about these ones is as well, there's no optics in the front of the lens of these. So whether you buy a pencil or a spread, that's how the light comes. You'll see some of the cheaper models, they just come with different covers. You put over the front, dilutes the light, um, and really takes out the intensity of the lights. So that's your 220mm HIDs. Out of the whole X-ray range, and they make a big range of lights, these have got to be my favourite, the quad optic light bars. Now, this one here I'm showing you, this is a 900mm. They start at 300, go all the way up to 1200. We've got a mix of a few of them over the black truck, which I'll run you through in a second. Each one of these LEDs is 10 watts. So depending on how many banks of LEDs you get, this has got 18 lights, this is a 180 watt light bar. The next one up, you get another six, 240 watt light bar. But it doesn't all come down to the wattage of the LEDs, it comes down to the projection of the light. So the way that the quad optics work, well really it's exactly that, it's quad optics. There's four optics in front of each LED that give the LED the direction. When you've got a standard reflector type setup in an LED, the light disperses all over the place and you can't get the intensity out of the light. With the quad optics, it's all about what's happening in front of the light before it's projected out in front of the car and that gives you the clearest light possible and gives you the most distance that you can get out of an LED light bar. All of these light bars in the quad optic range are die cast aluminium, they're not plastic. They've got an IP67 uh, rating, which means that they're fully waterproof. And once again, you can put these through anything that you want to put them through. Actually, I probably shouldn't say that because I'll probably start getting big warranty claims when people start smashing into trees with the light bars and say, well, Justin said that I could do it, so don't be doing that. But you can, you can beat up on them a lot. Like I said, haven't broken one yet. All stainless steel fittings. And probably the last thing uh, before we go over to the truck is if you're electronically challenged, like I am, hey Dave, I'm a, I'm a little bit electronically challenged. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I can use a pair of side cutters, that, that's about it. When he puts a soldering iron in my hand, I'll probably burn myself. This is another product from X-Ray that everybody has to have if you're going to install your own light bars. Check this out, come in close. This is a wiring harness for all of the light bars. And it really is as simple as this. I've wired up one of these light bars on uh, my Polaris buggy. Three easy steps, you grab this harness, 
plug it into your lights, connect the headlight adapter, run the wiring lights and terminate, run the switch into the cabin and push the button. And it's literally that simple. So if you don't want to make up wiring harnesses like Dave's doing for me all the time with all the electronic stuff that I fit, that's definitely something that you need to check out. Dave, come in here for a sec. You may as well, you're in, you're in here now. Yeah. So. Um, to fit a, say to a LC70 line Land Cruiser with the wiring kit, how long? Okay. One light bar. One light bar, under an hour. Under an in, hour. Including the harness and obviously yep. keeping it all neat while yep. you're running it through, yeah. Would you run multiple harnesses for multiple bars? Yeah, you, it's, it's easier, yep. especially because you've got the headlight adapter you know, for the back of your factory globe as you're piggybacking, so to speak. Yep. So you can run that switch with, you know, your high beam plus your isolator. Yep. Um, it's important to note too, the dual switching version that comes with this. Yeah, so if you I are forgot, running forgot to talk optic, about that. Yep. Um, you can have your parkers simple. on. Yep. And then have your, your high beams on. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now keep in mind guys, you can only wire into high beams in all states of Australia um, and check your local rules for mounting positions. That's right. On yeah. your vehicle. Some states you can't put them on the roof, you can't put them above the, the hoop of the bull bar. So make sure you check out, don't take my word for it on the way that I've set my truck up. In saying that, let's go and have a quick look at the black truck. Now I'll run you through the reason why you're gonna fit lights uh, to the front of your truck and why they're so important, besides the obvious. Um, now, if you live in remote locations or if you're touring remote locations, the number one issue that you're gonna have when you're traveling, especially during the night, is gonna be wildlife. Roadkill is a massive, massive problem when you get into those remote areas. You wanna see as far down the road as you possibly can. And obviously, for me, traveling with young kids, as much as I try and restrict driving at night, for obviously for driver fatigue, and it's a little bit more dangerous at night, um, number one reason is safety. So if you're carrying precious cargo inside your truck, like I'm doing all the time, I want to try and minimise any risk of something going wrong. So seeing down uh, the road is very important, but what's just as important, and the reason why we have these side 300 mils is we're projecting light onto the shoulders of the road. Now, it's not very often that you're going to have uh, an animal strike come at your head on. I've only actually ever done that, maybe once or twice, I think. They're always coming in from the sides. Now, when you're travelling out west, you'll see that they maintain the roads and they'll mow three, four, five, six metres off the side of the road and it's exactly for that reason. Wildlife coming in sideways. So again, with the, the quad optic bars and you can see the 1200 mil on the top, we've got spreaders on the outside and pencils in the centre. So that side is gonna give the projection onto the shoulders of the road. With me, these 300 mils, like I said on the angle, I've got maximum projection of light onto the side of the road and I've got that high 1200 mil light bar. So when you're traveling in say long grass and you're uh, you know, nice and, and tight and, and close to everything, well obviously you've got grass up to here, these light bars aren't gonna do a whole lot. The 1200 mil up on the top really gives me that projection down from the top of the truck. Got another 600 mil uh, on the front. 600 mil is a full pencil. You got your 220 mil HIDs like I explained before to get that maximum projection up the road. And then down the side of the vehicle, I've got X-ray work lamps and I've got some slimline uh, 400 mil or 450 mil bars, I think they are, underneath the roof rack. So when I pull up to camp, I can project it at camp. You can never have too much light, in my opinion, on a touring vehicle. Make sure you check out X-ray Vision and all the product range that they have available. They have something to suit your build. We're gonna finish loading up and we're out of here.